In this video, we're going to take a look at the factor theorem. So to start with, let's just give the definition of the factor theorem. So if we have a polynomial, say f of x here, so we have f of x, and let's say we know one of the roots of this polynomial. So let's say f of a is equal to zero. Okay. Then what we're saying here, so therefore x minus a is a factor of our polynomial f of x. So x minus a is a factor of f of x. Okay. So what we're actually saying here is if you know the roots, then you know the factors. And if you know the factors, then you know the roots. Okay. So that's a very brief introduction to the factor theorem. But other than that, there's nothing really too much to it. So let's take a look now at a couple of examples here together. And then on the next page, there's a couple of practice questions for you to have a go at. Now with this first one here, what we want to do is show that x plus 1 is a factor of this cubic polynomial here using the factor theorem. So if x plus 1 is a factor, then what I need to show here is f of minus 1 will be equal to 0. Okay, because that's what the factor theorem states. So all I need to do now is substitute minus 1 into this cubic polynomial here, and it should equal 0. So therefore, what we get here is minus 1 cubed plus 2 lots of minus 1 squared minus 5 lots of minus 1 minus 6. Okay, minus 1 cubed, well, that would be minus 1. Minus 1 squared is positive 1, so times that by 2, we get positive 2. Minus 5 times minus 1, so that would be positive 5. And then finally, minus 6 here at the very end. So what does this evaluate to? Well, minus 1 minus 6 is minus 7, plus 2 plus 5. Well, that'll just cancel and give me 0. So we get 0 there. So therefore, what that shows then is x plus 1 is a factor. The factor of our cubic, so let's just write it in full here. So x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 as f of minus 1 is equal to 0 there. Okay, and that's all we need to follow up with at the very end there, and that would get us full marks. Okay, so that's the solution to the first example. Now for this next one here. We're given that x minus 2 is a factor, again, of this cubic polynomial. We just want to find the value of d, okay? So notice d here is the constant term to our cubic polynomial. So if x minus 2 is a factor, again, all I'm going to do here now is just use the factor theorem. So in that case, f of 2 must be equal to 0. So if I substitute 2 into this cubic polynomial here, set it equal to 0, then we can solve. So in that case, I'm going to get 2 lots of 2 cubed plus 5 lots of 2 squared minus 14 lots of 2 plus d. Okay, and this is all equal to 0. What I need to do now is just simply evaluate this here and then solve for d. 2 cubed is 8, times that by 2 gives me 16. 5 lots of 2 squared, so 2 squared is 4, times that by 5 gives me 20. Minus 14 times 2, so that's minus 28 plus d, that's all equal to 0, okay? So we just need to simplify this here and then solve for d. So 16 plus 20 is 36, so 36 minus 28 plus d. I mean, you could just put this into your calculator. It's probably easier, but I am doing it by hand here. Um, so that's going to give me 8, so I get 8 plus d is equal to 0. So therefore, d is equal to minus 8 there, okay? And there we have it. So that gives us the solution to the second example. Moving on then, we have two practice questions here for you to have a go at. So pause the video now, have a quick go, and then we'll take a look in a moment at what you should have got. So hopefully you've gotten okay with these two practice questions. Let's take a look now at what you should have got. So for this first one here, we're told x minus 4 is a factor of this cubic polynomial. And what we want to do is find the value of b. Now notice b here is the coefficient of x squared, and 
All we need to do then is just use this fact here that x minus 4 is a factor of this cubic, and then we can solve for b. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use the factor theorem. So what we're saying here is f of 4 must be equal to 0. Now, if I substitute 4 into here, what we can do is set that equal to 0 then by the factor theorem and solve for b. Okay, so what we're going to get here, well, we're going to get 2 lots of 4 cubed, so 2 lots of 4 cubed plus b lots of x squared. Okay, so x squared in this case will be 4 squared. We'll simplify in a moment. Plus x, that's plus 4, plus 12. Okay, and this is all equal to 0. Well, 4 cubed would be 64 times that by 2, that's 128. See so how far we can get out a calculator. 16b uh, plus 16b. Um, plus 4 plus 12, so that's plus 16. Okay, and this is all equal to 0. Now, I'm going to get a calculator just so I don't make a mistake here. Um, so I'm going to get 128 plus 16. That's going to give me 154. So what I've got here is 16b plus 154, and that's equal to 0. So subtract 154 off both sides. So 16b is equal to minus 154. Divide through by 16 now, so minus 154 divided by 16, and I get that b is equal to minus 9 there. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to the first question. And let's take a look now at the second one here. So for this one, it's a little bit different, but hopefully you didn't struggle with it. All I want to do then is show that x plus 4 is a factor, so that's nothing new. But then we want to factorize the expression completely. So let's start with the first part here. So let's show that x plus 4 is a factor. So in that case, what we're saying is f of minus 4 is equal to 0. So we get minus 4 cubed, so minus 4 cubed, minus minus 4 squared. So we just need to be careful with um, our signs here. Minus 4 in lots of minus 4 plus 24. Okay. And by the factor theorem, again, this should be equal to 0. So let's evaluate this here. Minus 4 cubed, so that would be minus 64. Minus 4 squared would be 16, but then we do the minus that, so that's minus 16. Minus 14 times minus 4, so minus 14 times minus 4. That's 56, so that's plus 56. And then we've got plus 24 here. Okay, and what we do hope for here is that all of this equals 0. So minus 64. So minus 64, uh, minus 16, that gives me minus 80, plus 56, plus 24, perfect, we get 0. Okay, so that's equal to 0. So therefore, x plus 4 is a factor. Okay. Now, even if you couldn't show by the factor theorem that x plus 4 is a factor, you still can attempt the second part. So we can still attempt to factorize this expression completely. So what we're saying here is this cubic is going to be a product now of this term here and a quadratic. Okay, so what I'm saying then is x cubed uh, minus x squared minus 14x plus 24. So plus 24 can be expressed as x plus 4, x plus 4 times now some quadratic. Okay, so that's going to be ax squared, which in this case, it will just simply be a equals 1, okay, because it's x cubed, so we can put the x squared in straight away, so x squared plus bx plus c, okay. Now, it's up to you, you can go straight away to doing um, algebraic long division or, you know, dividing polynomials, you can do that method. I like to do this just by inspection. Um, it's completely up to you though which method you take. So if I show you how to do this by inspection, then we need to think about expanding this. So if I was to expand this, x plus 4 times this quadratic, well, that would give me the x cubed, so that's fine. Now, this number here, this 4, times this last term here, this integer or this um, constant term at the end, I should say really, this c, should be equal to 24. So what do I times 4 by to get 24? Well, that must be 6. So we can see straight away that c is equal to 6, okay? So what I've got now, if we just do it over here, I've got x plus 4 times x squared plus bx 
plus 6. Okay, all we need now is the value of b. And the easiest way to do that is to think about this x squared term here. Okay, well, I'm going to do 4 times x squared. Okay, so I get 4x squared. I've also got x times bx, okay, which would give me bx squared, so plus bx squared, plus bx squared. And other than that, we don't have any other x squared terms, okay, because I've got x times x squared, that would give me x cubed. Um, x times bx, that would give me the bx squared. We've got 4 times x squared, that would give me the 4x squared, but I can't do anything else to get an x squared term. But we know that this should be equal to minus x squared, okay, so minus x squared. So in that case, all I need to do now is subtract 4x squared off both sides. So we're going to room a little bit here, but subtract 4x squared off both sides. So I'm going to get bx squared is equal to minus 5x squared. And from here now, we can just compare coefficients. Okay, so therefore what we can see is b is equal to minus 5. So we've got the value of b, we've got the value of c. All I need to do now is just express it as um, a product, and then we need to factorize the quadratic. So we're going to room a little bit. Let's just clear the top part, and we'll start again up here, just so we've got enough room. Get rid of this, this, and this. So let's express this now as a, as a product here of a factor and our quadratic. So that was x plus 4. So that's x plus 4 times our quadratic, so that's x squared minus 5x plus 6, okay? And we want to factorize this completely, so we need to factorize now this quadratic. The x plus 4 stays as it is. This now, we can factorize this, so that'll be a product of two factors like this. Next at the front of both of them, so hopefully this should be straightforward, this is just GCSE maths. Two numbers that give me a product of 6, but add to give me minus 5. So that would be minus 3 and minus 2 there. Okay. And that's the fully factorized expression for x cubed minus x squared minus 14x plus 24 there. Okay. And there we have it. We eventually got there. But that gives us our solution to the final question. And that brings us to the end of this video on the factor theorem. In the next video, we're going to take a look at mathematical proof.